Player Homes, Green Death, and Strange People. Welcome to episode 30 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. Plasma, the ultimate in high-tech weaponry. It's powerful, it's cool, and it makes your enemies go... But it is a little underwhelming as well. I mean, there are some variations. You've got your short battles, your pistols, your shotguns, your sniper rifles. But there just feels like there should be more. And that is where a mod called Plasma Arsenal comes in, because it gives you a number of new ways to turn your enemies into pools of green goo. With this mod installed, you have access to a lot of new battles, including things like the Finned Battle, which allow you to shoot a little faster, the Automatic Splitter, that basically turns your plasma weapon into an automatic plasma shotgun, there is a long battle that actually increases the damage and range that you get, but it gives you a much slower projectile, and probably my favourite, the focused battle, which is pretty much the long battle but without the slower projectile. There is a flamer battle that will turn your plasma weapon into a, well, basically a green flamethrower. There is a launcher arc battle that will send a large ball of explosive plasma in an arc at your enemies. Think of it as a plasma grenade launcher. And there is even a straight launcher version which acts more like a rocket launcher. It just sends the plasma straight forward and when it hits, you get a big explosion. This mod also adds a new weapon called the Plasma Caster, and people who are fans of Fallout New Vegas will recognize this one immediately. Think of this as being like the Gatlin laser, except with plasma. The model is pretty cool. The textures are a little rough. It's very rusty, which I'm not sure I like, and the textures on the handles are a little strange. I think I'd like to see that cleaned up. But overall, the weapon works perfectly. And as if that were not enough, the mod also adds two new grenades. The Concussive Plasma Grenade, and my personal favourite, the Plasma Grenade Merv. This mod just adds so many options, it is an absolute must-have for anybody who likes plasma weapons. I'm actually amazed how little attention this mod has gained. In fact, the only reason I noticed it is they released a standalone version of the Plasma Caster, and that got my attention and brought my attention to the main mod. This mod is one I think if you are into plasma weapons, you really should check out. And if you're wondering, this mod is actually completely compatible with the gorgeous glowing Plasma Weapons mod. Now, if you don't know what that mod does, I will explain, but it's a little complicated, so pay attention, there will be a test at the end. And yes, I'm being sarcastic, because what can I say about this mod that the title doesn't explain? It makes your plasma weapons glow. And when I say glowing, I do mean it. You will be clearly visible at night, although I'm not sure it affects sneak. It probably should, though. You can actually choose the colour you want your plasma weapons to be as well, and there are quite a lot of choices. You've got blue, orange, red, yellow, there is even pink, and of course, the traditional green. And this colour change is applied to the plasma that your weapon fires as well. You choose the colour at install time, you can't actually change it in-game, and the colour you choose has no effect other than a visual one. There's no change in damage, range, or anything else. This is purely a cosmetic change, but what a cosmetic change it is. It looks so very cool when it glows at night. Now, I am a bit of a traditionalist. I like the green, but if you're looking for some, some other look, a different colour, or like me, you just want the weapon to glow, then try this mod out.
If you are an avid settlement builder, you probably are sick of traveling the Commonwealth trying to find traders who are selling various resources that you have run out of, especially wood. Because for some reason, that is like the most rare resource to find. No idea why. And you, you go along and you find you can buy an entire 100 each day, enough to make a small section of wall or a couple of pieces of furniture. Well, a mod called Larger Shipments should fix that problem for you a little. It just increases the size of these shipments of resources. So for example, most resources seem to be multiplied by a factor of four. So instead of 25, you get 100. And wood is raised to 1,000. Now, it doesn't mean you get more for your money because it also increases the amount of money you must pay. So instead of 240 for 100 wood, I will be paying 2,400 for the thousand. You're going to need to spend the same amount of cash for that amount of material. It just means you can get it all in one go rather than having to come, get one shipment, go back, sleep a night, come back and keep repeating. The next mod is a little strange, and indeed it's actually called People Are Strange, and when I say it's strange, I mean it's an interesting idea, something I'd never thought of, but actually makes a lot of sense. It's a mod that basically makes everybody a stranger until you've spoken to them. Just random people you've never spoken to before, you've no idea who they are. If you speak to them, their name will change. As you can see, I'm now speaking to a resident. I now know who this is. It's actually a fairly good way of knowing whether or not you've spoken to people before. Because if they're called stranger, you have never exchanged a word. It works the same way for named individuals as well. So this person is a stranger, even though they actually have a name. Until I initiate a conversation with them or they initiate it with me, I have no idea who I'm talking to. See, there you go. I now know his name, even though I didn't actually initiate the conversation. One thing to note, if you do use subtitles and you use the general subtitles, you, you will see sin. who is speaking even if they are still registered as a stranger. As I said, it's a bit of a strange idea and not something I would have ever thought of, but actually it makes perfect sense and if you really are heavy into role playing and immersion, this is a mod that will definitely add that. The people of the railroad might be okay sleeping on dirty mattresses and stepping over bricks and junk all the time, but I am not. Luckily for me, Eleonora, our favorite house mod creator, has me covered here. This is the faction housing overhaul for the railroad. It is a fully functioning player home in that it has a bed, storage space, it has a kitchen area with a functioning oven, and it even has a bathroom, which is clean. A clean and pleasant looking bathroom, complete with all the magazines around the toilet, as you would expect. The mirror not only acts as a cabinet, it also acts as a way to change your appearance. You have your own cat, apparently, and you even have a very cool sliding door. And I suggest you use it because Drummer Boy does have a nasty habit of entering and just basically coming and using all your stuff, which is very annoying. It keeps the feeling of the railroad hideaway and yet gives it that interesting cluttered feel that you've come to expect from Eleonora's home mods. It really does look like a pretty pleasant place to live. The quarters you get on the Pridwin are a little simpler, being only one room and a small toilet, but that room is really well stocked out and has full crafting station support. Along with all of the containers that you could possibly use in an apartment, you have a power armor station, a weapons bench, an armor bench, 
and a chem bench. Of course, you have a stove to make your food, a bed, a desk, and an awful lot of decorations. The containers are actually really well done. You can pretty much immediately see what sort of item you should place in each container. The crafting stations share a workshop inventory with Boston Airport, so if you have a supply line set up there, you will be able to use the resources from all of your other settlements whilst crafting. What is also interesting is that the crafting benches in the Pridwin itself now share this feature, and you can actually place things there, and it will appear in your settlement workshop inventory. There is no bathroom, but there is a tiny little area for a toilet, although I was somewhat surprised to find no magazines lying around the floor. As with the railroad quarters, you can use the mirror to give yourself a shave and a haircut. This is a great little player home that manages to keep the military Brotherhood of Steel feeling whilst having just enough clutter to be interesting. And lastly, in the castle, you have the General's Quarters. This is my personal favorite. I love using the castle as a base. It always feels somehow right as the General of the Minutemen, but it always feels so impersonal. And after all, a General really should have his own room, a place to store, well, let's be honest, to store all the weapons he doesn't want the other Minutemen to steal the next time there's a battle. Once again, the mod maker has really used the space well and added a lot of very interesting clutter. The only crafting station is a food crafting station, the oven, but you do have the usual collection of containers. So if you wanna spread your ammo, weapons, armor, all in different places to find them easily, you can do that. Now, there are two other mods in this series, one for Vault 81, where I'm afraid I have not been, so I could not test, and the other one for the Institute, but you need to have finished the game siding with the Institute. And although I have done that on the Xbox, the mod is not available for consoles at this moment, so I was not able to check that one out either. But if you have finished the game and you are the director, of the Institute, there is such a home for you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all we have time for in this video. It has been yet another busy week with mixed news. Obviously, the bad news about the PlayStation 4 mods being delayed is, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow, but hopefully it is just a delay. We will just have to see. As you can see, I am finishing with the screenshots that you guys have been posting for me. They are great as always, and I do appreciate the time you take to post them. If you would like to upload an image for me to use in these videos, I will leave a link down below that will take you to another video that will show you exactly how you can do that. I'll be back next week with more great mods to share with you, and I would love it if you could join me for that. I look forward to seeing you there, and until then, remember as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.